Hello, everyone. Welcome to the um, October 9th meeting of the Women in Product Toastmasters. Uh, I will be your Sergeant Arms today, Amy Kirkland, and today our theme is Product Career Leaders. We have three great speeches lined up today about uh, product, product clear. Wow, I'm that was not our theme. Our theme is actually product career ladders. Sorry about that. And we are have we have three great speeches lined up today, um, talking about product career ladders. Um, and at this time, I would like to introduce our Toastmaster, um, Monique Tucker. Thank you, Amy. I also, I think the first time I read it, saw product career leader. So you're you're totally good there. <laughs> so good good morning and good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Or well, I guess before I get started, um, I wanted to say welcome to our guests. Our guests want to just uh, quickly introduce themselves and tell us how you how you found Toastmasters. Uh, let's see who our guests are. Uh, Funmi, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Fumi. I'm dialing in today from the United Kingdom. I recently joined the Women in Products Facebook group, and I found someone asking um, about, you know, public speaking. And that was how I got to know about the Toastmaster. I then direct, sent a direct message to someone that suggested this group, if I could get an invite. And that's why I'm here today. Um, I am a product manager. I just started, well, I, prior to being a product manager, I was a senior business analyst. So I just recently got the product uh, manager role and I'm also looking to develop it myself. And, uh, because I now have more opportunities uh, to speak to senior uh, stakeholders, I kind of want to develop my public speaking ability, and that's why I'm here today. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Thank, thank you. you. That is a, a big reason, especially coming from the UK. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Do we have any other guests on that would like to introduce themselves? Oh, I think Cynthia is raising her hand. Like I see oh. her. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see it. Welcome back, Cynthia. Thank you. I'm actually a new member. I just joined last week. Oh, well, congrats. Well, yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, I live in New York, um, just outside of Manhattan. And I'm also a member of Tech Ladies. And through Tech Ladies, I saw an interesting posting that said, if you want to improve your public speaking, uh, Toastmasters was suggested. So with the help of Tiffany, I came to the first meeting and I liked it a lot and I decided I wanted to join. I work uh, as a senior technical person and I'm trying to develop more leadership and presentation skills for presenting to upper level management. That is an important job or important role that we play as product managers. So thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Great. Excellent. So I think, was that everyone? We can get started. I'm trying to see if anyone else joins. Uh, Luz, are, are you, are you, uh, we're seeing, I feel like I've seen oh, you yeah, before. Oh yeah, I'm a member. Yes, you're yeah. a member. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it though. <laughs> yes. All right. Excellent. Okay. So why don't we get started? So good afternoon and good morning. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm excited to be your Toastmaster and introduce our theme of the day, which is product career ladders. Uh, I remember a piece of advice I read related to career advancement. It asked if you would get on a plane, if you didn't know where it was going, think about that for a moment. Getting on a plane, you have no idea where you're going. You could be flying to Hawaii, or Antarctica. Your flight could be 30 minutes or 20 hours. The entertainment you planned, the clothing you packed might be ill-equipped to handle the journey. Also, the destination might not be what you were looking for. 
Reading this advice reminded me how important it is to think about where you want to go in your career and to make decisions along the way that help support the goal. It is very easy to just kind of take a back seat to your career and just be along for the ride. Product management can vary so much depending on which industry you're in, the size of the company, and then if you're an individual contributor or a people leader. So that makes it so important to have that end goal in mind as you move up the product career ladder, which is the theme of the day. And I'm excited to learn from everyone throughout today's session. So if we can get to it now, I'll first explain the structure of the meeting, and you can also follow along with the agenda, which uh, let's see if we if someone can post it in our chat real quick. Um, so to explain the meeting, it's divided into three different sections. The first is the prepared speech round, where we have three members delivering standard, standard speeches today, which will be Marguerite, Ashley, and Tiffany. The second part of the session is the tab table topics round where we can practice impromptu speaking. Today that is Amelia. And the third and final part is the evaluation round in which all the prepared speeches will be evaluated by the general evaluator and her team. The general evaluator today is Jennifer and Jennifer will be supported by a team of Toastmasters who will um, help run the meeting. So Jennifer, would you introduce yourself and the, your team and their role? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. So as a general evaluator, for those of you who are new to the Toastmasters for, uh, format, my role in this meeting is to take a look at how the entire meeting is facilitated. Um, and that will ultimately help us to be able to be better Toastmasters and facilitating the meetings. As you know, in our roles in professional life as a product manager, or even as a program manager, we're constantly asked to put together agendas. We're constantly asked to like kind of coordinate different types of speakers, things of that nature. So I'll be taking a look across the entire meeting and taking notes as we go along to see where we can improve. The other thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce our my little team of co-evaluators that will help us in terms of evaluating our speakers or our um, table topics. So first I have, I have three evaluators today. We have three evaluations or prepared speeches that will be happening today. So Lori Edwards will be our first evaluator. Our second evaluator will be Amulia and our third evaluator will be me. And then I'd like to hand it over to our odd counters to my, wait, I think our odd counter today is gonna, yeah, okay, there's three my. If you could do a quick um, intro of yourself and your role. That would be great. Sure. Um, thank you, uh, Madam General Evaluator. Um, greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. So the purpose of the A counter is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or a pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and, you know. I will also listen for the filler sounds, including a, um, and er. I'll also note when a speaker repeats a word or a phrase, such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used these expressions. Thank you. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, as far as timer is concerned, today I believe we're going to have. Marguerite, are you filling in as, as timer today? Yes. Awesome. You want to give a quick synopsis of what your role is? Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Uh, so as timer, I will time the prepared speeches, the tables, topics, speeches, and the evaluations. And I will alert each speaker of the time they have left using green, yellow, and red cards, uh, which denote specific times remaining. Uh, so for our speeches today, I'll raise the green card at five minutes, the yellow card at six minutes, and the red card after at seven minutes. Uh, for our uh, <clears throat> table topic speeches, I'll raise the green card at one minute, 
yellow card at one and a half minutes and red card at two minutes. And then finally for our evaluations, I will raise the green card at two minutes, the yellow card at uh, three minutes and the red card at three and a half minutes. Back to you. All right, thank you, Marguerite. And I know you're doing double time here as both a speaker and as a timer, which I really appreciate because as a speaker, it's really tough to like get your nerves under control and do the timing. So I appreciate you stepping up and doing double time here. Um, and then I'd like to turn it over to Amulia, who is our Table Topics Master. If you could explain to the group as far as how Table Topics will operate and what it is, that would be great. Of course, thank you, Madam General Evaluator. The goal of the Table Topics session is to challenge us to improve our impromptu speaking skills, to give us the opportunity to formulate a structured answer and to uh, answer a question on the spot. I will say a question, pause for a few seconds, and then pick someone to answer, and the speaker will have one to two minutes to respond to the question. And to make this a little fun, we will also ask participants to vote for the best table topic speech, and I will be collecting the responses through a poll. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amelia. And then last but not least, I'll turn it over to Lori Edwards, who is our grammarian of the day. And if you could explain your role and then also tell us what the word of the day is and how we might go about using it today. You got it. All right, so as the grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all the speakers, um, listening closely to their language usage. So I'll take notes of any improper use of language, but I will also take note of any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts that might come through um, any prepared speeches or table topics today. So as my as the grammarian, it's also my duty to introduce the word of the day. So today's word of the day is courageous. Um, courageous means possessing or being characterized by courage, brave, or bold. Um, and to use that as an example in a sentence, oftentimes to advance our careers, it requires us to be courageous. Um, I encourage everyone to use the word of the day, whether it's in table topics or your prepared speeches or evaluations, um, see how many times you can use it and even carry it on through your week this week. Um, back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thanks so much. Well, that is a super awesome word. It's gonna take a lot of courage, does that count? <laughs> to be able to use it throughout this next hour, hour and a half. And I'd like to turn it back over to our Madam Toastmaster so we can get our um, the rest of our agenda underway. So back to you, Monique. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator and Evaluator 3. So I think we have a lot of courageous uh, Toastmaster members today doing double duty. So thank you for taking yourself um, and out of your comfort zone there. Uh, so, so now we're ready to begin our prepared speech portion. And our first speaker today will be Marguerite. And Marguerite is a consumer product manager with more than 10 years of experience, most recently in startups and innovation. Currently, she's focused on an inclusive inclusivity project in Nike's Digital Innovation Lab. She's also the VP of Community Management for the Black Product Managers Network and VP of Education for this Toastmasters Club. In Pathways, she is on Presentation Mastery Research, and the title of her speech is People Manager or Individual Contributor. With that, I invite Marguerite to please take the stage. Thank you for the introduction, Monique. And hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Once I set out to explore what career progression in product management looks like, I quickly realized there's a lot of variation in people's career paths and even company product career ladders. Pursuing and pursuing higher titles is only one approach. I'd have to collect all the possible paths myself before I could evaluate them. Until recently, I put actually, I actually put a limited put limited thought into planning my career. When making career moves, I focus on gaining new experiences. If I was bored of my role, then it was time for me to move on. And I chose new roles based on the learning opportunities they provided. 
Uh, but a couple of years ago, I decided to more, be more intentional, intentional about progressing in other areas of my career, not just learning. So today I'll describe potential PM career paths the cri that I reviewed, uh, the criteria I used to evaluate those paths, and the path I chose. The first career growth path I explored is the most obvious, going from individual contributor to people manager. Some large companies have shared their product management career levels on their websites or through the product management blog, uh, Lenny, Lenny's newsletter. Inter Intercom, for example, has published their letter and the competency requirements for each level so you can understand what's required. In general, across lots of organizations, a PM can go from associate product manager all the way up to chief product officer. And somewhere in the middle around principal PM or group PM, they start managing other product managers. Then I stumbled upon product leadership coach Ken Norton's blog post about dual product management career path. In this post, he advocated, advocated for, for providing growth paths for PMs, similar to what's already available for engineers. One path for PMs who are interested in management and one who, who are interested in becoming experts uh, in a specific domain. Each path would provide a similar progression in compensation and prestige. And that really sparked sort of a thought in the back of my mind, which I'll discuss later. So besides progressing as a manager uh, or an expert individual contributor, other common paths for PMs are becoming founders of new companies becoming consultants for startups or, uh, or uh, lar large organizations as well, becoming product coaches or even becoming investors. These alternative paths are interesting because they can be explored while you're following the more traditional uh, career path before you commit to them full time. So earlier I mentioned that I recently decided to become more intentional, intentional about my career choices. All of the paths I just listed seem feasible for me uh, with, a little, uh, with a, uh, a little extra education, so I needed to narrow it down a bit. I focused on a few key areas in my evaluation. Perception, money, and the manage management responsibilities. So about perception. Progressing through higher and higher titles feels like the easiest way to be successful, even though it's not easy in practice, it just feels natural. Plus it's gratifying and it impresses family and friends. And it might look off to a hiring manager if they don't see continu continuous uh, title progress on your resume. So if I didn't choose the traditional career growth path, I'd have to make sure to brand myself really carefully. Next, money. Uh, money is important. <laughs> At least for me, I enjoy work, but I want to retire before I need to move into assisted living. And right now, <laughs> I'm in my prime earning years, and I want to take advantage of that. So finally, uh, how did I feel about the responsibilities of a manager? And I've spoken to a few PMs who are already on that track about their experience. People management, the, the coaching and recruiting of PNs sounds difficult, but exciting to me. So much so that I've already started mentoring new and aspiring PMs in my free time to sort of build that skill. Organizational management, on the other hand, sounds less fun. Uh, and I, because I lack the level of persuasion skills needed to achieve alignment with other leaders in the company, I'd really need to improve in that area pretty quickly. Sorting through these considerations was initially pretty difficult. In fact, about a year ago, I was telling some peers that I was planning to work towards becoming a VP of product. It seemed like the right goal uh, for perception and financial reasons, but also because it would put me in a position to hire more women and people of color into product management roles and help nurture their careers, which is something that is really important to me. Uh, but after doing the research, I had to be courageous and realize management leadership does not really fit me. I thrive on collaboration, not negotiation. And I love building products. I want to be a hands-on builder for the rest of my product management career. 
So, and I think there's ways I can make enough money and support underrepresented PMs without climbing that the people management ladder. So after researching and evaluating potential career paths, I've decided to continue, continue primarily as an individual contributor. If I find the right opportunity, I'll pursue a, product, a group product manager role because it seems like the right mix of people management and product de development responsibilities. And if you're thinking about the same questions and would like to chat about it, please reach out to me via Zoom chat or email me. I'd love to be a sounding board for you. Uh, this is a really fun thing, topic to think through uh, and start building new goals for my career. Thank you for your time and attention. Back to you, Venom Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Marguerite. That was really, really informative speech. Uh, so I wanna like give you your double duty. Can you set a timer for two and a half minutes? Yes. <laughs> and I wanna open up the floor for anyone to ask questions to Marguerite. And I cannot see if someone's raising their hand. So Marguerite, just... I have an immediate question. Sure. How did you feel when you came to that self-revelation? Uh, it feels like it's because it's not, I guess, because it's not the traditional path, it feels scary, I guess. It feels like, it, am I, you know, going to live up to people's expectations? Am I, you know, thinking about uh, external, really the external influences <clears throat> in your life and how you're perceived? Um, but if I really thought about what I wanted and I think, and ultimately how that's the most important, you know, way to make these decisions that impact large uh, chunks of your life, uh, I feel it took a while, but I feel very good about it. <laughs> uh, Amelia? Thank you so much, Marguerite. Um, what kind of advice would you have for someone who's also maybe going through some of that decision-making process of pursuing either IC or, or leadership, what kind of things should they be thinking about? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely think about uh, what uh, what's most important to you. So is it you know, work-life balance, career, the type of thing you're working on? Uh, and then also, um, and sort of what, path would optimize you for that, especially in terms of what companies you're interested in. Some companies, you know, are more generous to people who are senior uh, uh, individual contributors, or in some companies are more traditional and, and you know, there's more benefit, you know, financial benefits, uh, for example, for people managers. So investigate those things and also talk to people who are in both of those roles. You might find that you know one just sounds way more exciting than the other. Like, and talk to individual contributors who have decided to stay that way in their 15, 20 years in their career, um, and what that's like. Uh, those people tend to be really interesting, but people who are VP of product are also like really impressive and exciting. So I would say find the find opportunities to talk to any of those folks. Do we have any other questions for Marguerite? Oh, I know I have one, if no one else does. Um, just, I'm curious, like once you decided that you wanted to go down the IC path, um, did, you, did, did you become vocal with it? Did you share it with your manager or anything? Or is it something you kind of kept to yourself? Uh I have talked about it with my manager. I don't know if it'll be end up being in my current company, but um, yeah, I'm definitely talking to uh, sort of the uh, the peers that I connect with uh, in the communities I'm a part of, and pretty much everyone <laughs> everyone who wants to talk about it, I'll definitely talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and they've been luckily, supportive. My manager, my manager has been supportive. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marguerite. I think we're at time, probably. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay, so now we will move on to our second speaker. Uh, so based in Austin, Texas, 
Ashley is an associate product manager with Keller Williams. She works with cross-functional teams to identify and implement product features that enable real estate agents to improve their day-to-day -day business practices. Outside of work, she enjoys practicing the art of resting. In Pathways, she is on level three, Negotiate the Best Outcome. The title of her speech today is Negotiation Tactics for Beginners. With that, I invite Ashley to take the stage. Beautiful. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, for the introduction. And that last statement of the art of resting, it's definitely something I am learning. I am a blooming product manager in the making, and I am walking away with plenty of lessons, especially over the past six months now of being in this role. And for me, in terms of what is that definition of taking rest, it's been playing video games out of all the things. It's been an absolute delight to get back to that. And oddly enough, while playing video games, I'm starting to see the parallels of reality, which can be a little jarring, but it's also interesting to think about it in terms of this play world and reality and how they actually do line up mainly with the start of a video game. It's always foundational. You're gonna learn those basics of how to move your character around, what makes them jump, what makes them hop, and anything else that gives them some kind of interaction. Also at the start of a video game, you're looking at the story. You're seeing what happened, what went wrong, and then what the goal is at the end. Everything in the middle though, that's up to you. So you get to choose your character, you get to move them around however you see fit, you get to think about those interactions with the characters, and we forget to talk about this, but there are failures. There are many, many failures. I've been playing Zelda, I've died a lot, but every time I've walked away learning something, and because I've learned that, I know I don't need to talk to this character over here because they're actually going to, you know, end me, and then I'm going to have to start over again. Or... I didn't like the outcome that I did, so I'm going to try something different. But each time I'm walking away knowing something different than I can apply the next time I go back and try again. Going back to the point of how playing video games of, well, playing video games also lines up with reality is the fact that kind of similarly, humans do the same thing. We get our basics, we learn the fundamentals, we learn how to move around we learn how to interact with others and then what happens in the middle is up to us but also at the end whatever that goal is are we going to make those choices are we going to try again to actually get to the end of whatever the goal is in mind and lately for me as a pm the one thing that i've taken away is that now i find myself in meetings with higher level conversations, with higher management, different team dynamics, I feel lost when it gets to the point of negotiation. Honestly, it was kind of fearful and nerve wracking and I could feel myself flutter during meetings because I just wasn't paying attention or I was missing something that was said or I didn't feel informed enough. Well, thankfully with video games and also a creative outlet just to not think about work, um, the one big important piece of that is, again, the basics and the foundations. So I'm hoping that you guys can walk away with at least the foundational basics of being able to walk in courageously and confidently when it comes to a negotiation. And this can be when you're sitting in a high stakes board meeting, or even if you're just doing something in terms of working with your pod and trying to get the team to agree on a design change, whatever it is, hopefully you can apply these to how you negotiate with whomever. Step one, be prepared. Do your homework, do your research, understand the information. Also, and part of being prepared, you also wanna make sure you plan and think about other alternatives. While it's nice to stick with the first idea that might not be the best, there might be other things available that might be more crucial and impactful to getting that overall outcome that you're seeking. Second, listen. Listen to what's going on in the conversation. If you're like me and you get flustered and you get nervous, for me, I sometimes have to put my hands on my chair just so I can actually make myself be present and be grounded again. 
but I'm also listening to the conversations far more clearly now than I was before. And if I can, like on a Zoom meeting, I'm also looking at body language and body structure. Is somebody tense because they really have something they want to say, but they're being quiet about it? Or is somebody just off in the clouds or looking down on their phone and not paying attention? Looking at those visual cues in order to make an informed decision on my part is super helpful. So with step two, it's helpful to listen, but it's also equally helpful to watch if you can. Lastly is self-control. When you're listening, it's so easy to take something personally or to take it as absolute. Well, it's not absolute. And it's okay to have that emotion for a minute, let it pass, but get back in the moment and listen to what's happening in the situation so that you can negotiate, hopefully, a win-win outcome. So with those three foundational skills of being prepared, listening, and self-control, those are great ways to master and navigate in the world of negotiations, whether it be something very small and minute of getting your team to agree on something within your pod or something that is high stakes where you are talking about finances and budgetary things. You might need to negotiate every now and again there too. But everything that happens in between is absolutely your choice. You can learn from your lessons or you can learn from lessons. You can learn from other people's mistakes and keep trying every single time. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you so much, Ashley. So very fun to compare video games and negotiation. So uh, Marguerite, if you could put two and a half minutes on the, on the clock. Are there any questions from our audience for Ashley? I'll Sorry. kick us off. Um, so Ashley, as you have transitioned into a full product management role, um, what has been the most surprising to you now that you're doing the job versus when you were thinking about doing the job? That is a phenomenal question. And what I've taken away is I thought I needed to know every technical thing under the sun, and I don't. I have bugged and bothered my engineers so much. Now we have a very good working relationship that where I feel inadequate and I don't know anything, I know that I can comfortably go to them and ask like, what is this? And please dumb it down because I don't understand. And they gracefully fill it in for me. And if I don't understand, then they point me in the right direction. And I'm still learning from them. But that has been the absolute biggest thing of it's okay to not know everything underneath the sun. As long as you can depend on your team to help fill that gap, then you're okay. Do we have an, another question for Ashley from anyone? Oh, I thought I just saw a hand raise. Where'd it go? Oh, Tiffany. Loved your speech, Ashley, thank you. Um, out of the three foundational pillars that you shared with us today, which did you personally find the hardest to build a foundation around and what recommendations would you have to someone who's trying to focus on building that particular muscle? Immediately, the first thing is self-control. It is a practice to not be reactive to whatever it is that you hear. And being able to tame that and quell that and to not instinctively just have a rebuttal to argue is definitely, it's definitely a trait that requires a lot of practice in order to master. There have absolutely been times when I strongly disagree with something. However, also the tone and the delivery of which you state your disagreement uh, has an impact on the conversation overall. But ultimately with being able to master self-control, you can kind of sift through the pieces that aren't important to the conversation, but also learn what exactly is the core of this person's issue 
or what they're wanting to negotiate or hope to walk away with and be able to work around that, whether it be you're both totally in line or it's an instance of you realize I'm not going to get anything out of this. We're not going to win. This is everybody's losing. We're probably going to have to walk away from this and people are going to be unhappy. And that's okay. That's okay. You can absolutely figure it out another way in a different situation. Great. Uh, do we have one more question? Oh, we, I know we're at time, but if we had one more question, we could probably sneak it in. All right, cool. Well then, thank you so much, Ashley. We'll move on to our third speaker. So our third speaker today is Tiffany. Tiffany is an aspiring product leader who strives to solve complex problems by putting people first and having fun in the journey of bringing products successfully to market. She also likes to share her musings about product development on Twitter and on Substack. Okay, you're gonna have to put your handle in chat so we can follow along with her speech titled, Create Your Career Adventure for her second project within the second level of presentation mastery. She will share three principles by which she makes big life decisions. With that, I invite Tiffany to speak. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, and welcome fellow courageous Toastmasters and honored guests. I want to share a tumultuous and courageous journey with you about making a career pivot, so fasten your seatbelts. It was the end of June, and a director of product said to this product manager, hey, I work with a friend who wants you to be his program manager. Her initial gut reaction was, I've worked so hard to position my current product role before my executive leadership team nine months ago. I've just gotten into the groove of being a product manager and leading a newly formed product management function. Are you kidding me? <laughs> now, instead of brushing away this product director and former colleague, she heard him out agreed to an informational chat with his partner in crime at work and lived out three life principles as unbeknownst to her, she started writing the next chapter of her career courageously. The three principles she now lives by are prioritize yourself and your own needs, goals, and dreams because no one else will. Two, make progress over striving to achieve perfection. And three, grow or get out, be courageous. The first principle is putting yourself first. As she moved through the formal interview loop with the potential new employer, she reflected on her own career aspirations. She realized somewhere along the way in shepherding product development and go-to-market efforts at her current organization, she had put what the, organiza what the organization needed ahead of what she wanted out of her career. While her effort was commendable, a part of her desperately wanted to have at least one in-house coach from whom she could learn the foundational product skills, instead of being the resident expert when she herself was still very new to product work. While her current role in org would enable her to meet her long-term dream of becoming a product leader, she realized that in the short to medium term, this dream might not be so feasible to attain if she kept having to figure things out virtually on her own. Now, all these revelations led this PM to hypothesize that she had to reprioritize around herself. The second principle is optimizing for making progress over chasing perfection. As this product manager moved through the interview loop, her referral diligently followed up with her in between the interviews. In, was, in one such conversation, she asked her referral rhetorically, am I being a bloody fool for not taking a leap with this new role? What he shared with her in response really made her think. It's human nature to be comfortable in a familiar environment. The job market is really strange right now. It's scary to get a new job in the midst of messy socioeconomic times. And last but not least, the role isn't exactly aligned with where she had thought she wanted to be. True, these were all valid reasons for her to stay put where she was. However, this new role presented several enticing opportunities to her. 
working alongside high caliber product and engineering leaders and peers, working alongside a wider breadth of cross-functional roles, diversifying her own subject matter expertise, learning how to thrive in a company that's over 200 times the size of her current company, and having a more well-established career planning system to align her own aspirations against. This good cop, bad cop mental routine led her to hypothesize that she had to do whatever was in her locus of control to ensure each future role she stepped into was better than her last, starting then and there. The last principle is to leave an environment if and when you are no longer learning from it. It was Friday, September 16th. It was around 9 a.m. in the morning. This product manager had kicked off her work day. She suddenly received a text from a college friend who graduated a year ahead of her from the same program. Her friend asked, I got a job offer two days ago. I need to get back to them with my decision before the end of today. I'm wondering if I should negotiate for more compensation. What do you think? Then she sent this product manager a Google sheet comparing her current role and potential new role. As soon as this product manager looked over her friend's decision matrix, she realized her friend faced a similar crossroads that she herself was going through. Essentially, she was looking for growth opportunities that her current role couldn't offer. A wave of realization suddenly washed over this product manager, and she was suddenly significantly more confident about her decision to accept the offer for this new role. You may have guessed it by now, this courageous product manager, well, technically former product manager, was me. I nearly forfeited an incredible new opportunity due to some cost thinking, being overly attached to a job title, and over-indexing on the long term at the expense of the short term to get there. The next time you're thinking about where you are in your career and to where you want to steer it, I encourage you to reflect on at least these three questions. One, am I owning all the steps of my unique journey? Two, am I making progress towards my vision? And three, am I growing or stagnating? To wrap up, I would like to share with you one last mantra that I've been reiterating to myself to find inner peace and remind myself to be courageous. Life is like an open world video game and no, this was not planned with Ashley. There's no singular linear path that will let you win the game of life. Instead, take ownership over your past, present, and future, such that you'll look back on your life with a sense of fulfillment. Thank you all so much for listening, and back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Uh, great parting words, and I appreciate you sharing that journey. Uh, Marguerite, if you could put two and a half minutes on the clock. Do you have any questions for Tiffany? Oh, oh. Uh, let's see. Ashley, you want to go? Oh, or Lori, sorry. <laughs> Lori, I think, and Ashley. Okay. I was like, I think we raised at the same time. Um, so, uh, Tiffany, great speech. I am curious, how did you actually decide to move into program management over product management and what like feelings or things came along with that decision? Something I realized along the way during around two months of a lot of self-reflection and going through the interview loop, I realized I was already doing both roles. And I thought to myself, okay, being presented with this opportunity clearly means I have a lot of potential elsewhere. And the following question I asked myself was, okay, if I have the signal now, is that telling me I should perhaps continue with the interview loop while starting to look for actual like product roles? Or should I take um, this opportunity for now? And to be honest, it was a lot of inner turmoil because I thought, okay, like I'm on this road to product. Like I worked so hard to get here to try to get this position that I desperately wanted. And it was at that moment of revelation where I realized, okay, maybe my desperation is sort of 
screwing myself over right now. And I thought, okay, you know, if I can't take the gold medal, I'll take silver. If I can't take the silver medal, I'll take bronze. If I can't get bronze, I'll take fourth. Um, and I thought um, a, lo a lot of people, I know product is really hard to break into now because it's just, it's essentially the new like management consulting. And I thought, okay, anything I can do in this with this next role will be better than where I am now. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I know I can do the product work, I, who cares about what my title is? I can, you know, have the title of technical program manager, but everyone knows functionally I'm a product oriented person. So I hopefully answered your question. <laughs> Thanks so much for the question, Lori. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Ashley, would you like to go next? Yes, I would. Thank you, Tiffany, and apparently great minds think alike today, <laughs> gamers. Uh, my question for you, I heard you cover reaching out to someone and helping you kind of bounce ideas off and make decisions about where you wanted to be and where you wanted to go. Was it impactful for you to have that support and, and cohort to help navigate that? It was incredibly helpful, not just from a tangible, like what's my best career move perspective, but also from honestly a psychological and emotional perspective, because I also realized this was my first, like I remember this was my first job out of graduating from university. So there was definitely some deeper level of attachment. And I think that's where the concept of, you know, Buddhism, Stoicism, you name it, the concept of detachment is really important. I think not just in making career decisions, but also in day-to-day -day product work as well. So that was one aspect. And it made me realize how privileged and fortunate I am to be able to have those connections who are willing to, you know, just um, like, let me brain dumb, just give them a stream of consciousness and hear their perspective because they're all so much more experienced than I am. And I've gone through a lot more in life, not just in their careers to help me sort of distill my thoughts and help me prioritize as well. Thank you for the question. Thank you. All right, it looks like we are at time. So I appreciate your speech, Tiffany, thank you so much. Um, and thank you to all three of our speakers and super helpful topics and um, information you've all shared with us. So I've definitely been taking notes now, but now we will move on to the second portion of our day, which is table topics, which will be hosted by Amelia. And Amelia, we wanna kick us off with some impromptu speaking. Great, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. These were some really fantastic speeches and I'm excited to see how we might be able to also do some really great impromptu speeches as well. The first question I have is actually based off of Marguerite's speech. As a PM, do you see yourself progressing on the individual career, individual contributor career ladder or the manager track? Why are you choosing your particular career path there? And I would like to ask Funni if she'd like to answer this question. And I'm happy to repeat it as well. Okay, could you please repeat the question? Yep. So as a product manager, do you see yourself progressing as an individual contributor? Uh, or do you see yourself becoming a manager as you progress along your career? Um, I would say I see myself carrying on to be an individual contributor. And that's because earlier on in my career, I've come to realize that I don't enjoy people management. So I tend to, as much as possible, shy away from any role that would require me to manage people. Although obviously in product management, you still have to do with a cross-functional team and I'm having to do that now in my current role. But I've, from doing uh, this role in the last uh, three months, 
I've also, it's kind of reinforced that decision for me that, you know, being a people manager is definitely enough for me. I would like to just carry on being an individual contributor. Awesome. Thank you so much for me for that really great response and answer there. The next question I have is what are your personal tips for having career oriented conversations with your manager, conversations that can hopefully help you progress along your specific career ladder? And I'd like to ask Cynthia if she could respond to that question. Sure, thank you very much for the question. <clears throat> I normally like to bring that topic up as a question to my manager and ask them, schedule a meeting and ask them, how do you feel I'm progressing right now? Is this what you had in mind? Has anything changed recently that I should be aware of or you would need me to change with it? And based on the way they react to me, I start to make decisions and I start to evaluate my options. If they seem to launch into that positively and they have suggestions, I start writing them down. I start asking them, well, you know, would this fit in, would that fit in? I try to see if I can come up with a plan on the fly that they seem to be enthusiastic about and embrace. If not, if they hesitate or there's any um, lack of, of a positive response, I don't press it any further at that point. I say, thank you for your time. This is something we can pick up in the future. But I also like to close with them and ask them, what are the current trends you see that might impact the area I'm working in? So instead of taking uh, the pressure off of them about me, I try to put it on myself and I try to ask them for their general knowledge that might impact me. And based on that, I'll start to make decisions. But depending on how open they are with me and how enthusiastically they embrace me, um, that determines how much I expose or reveal my, myself to them because they have more people than myself to work with. They have a team of people. We all have to work together. So I don't know what factors they have, what knowledge they have, and I depend on their response to me, their enthusiasm, the way they meet me, and whether they try to follow through on their own to determine how, how much further I'm going to proceed with that discussion. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I think that's a really helpful framework to really progress along those career conversations with. Great, my next question is, what are some tips and tricks you've learned from product managers who are more senior or more experienced than you? And I'd like to ask Luz to maybe answer this question. Thank you, that's a, that's a great question. So some tips and tricks I've learned from more senior product managers, first just, more specifically when it comes to the career ladder was one of the, one of the first tips my manager my manager at the time gave me was to first like be open when it comes to like what are my goals with my manager and just being very explicit about that just because i think sometimes there's there's issues when there's some assumptions made where maybe your manager may assume like you want to keep um keep moving up in like the in the individual contributor role or that management role, but then when it comes to like when like review season or or be getting promoted, you may not get that opportunity that you're interested with. So first, that that's a tip I I I've taken in in my role, just always being very explicit about what what's my goal for my role and what what I'm interested in. And another tip. Uh, that I received from more senior product managers also trying to similar to one of the points brought up in one of the presentations was that stopping and not immediately reacting when it comes to these different discussions just because it's very easy to have that gut reaction when it comes to when you hear something that you may not agree with and just taking that second to pause and and just think, okay, like is it am I just immediately reacting to this, or is there is there something here where I, I I need to think a little bit more before before I respond? That's okay. a really great response, Liz. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. 
My next question is, have you ever thought about leaving product management and pursuing a different route? And if so, what are some possible options you've thought about exploring? And I'd like to ask Jennifer if she could respond to that question. Yeah, thanks for the question. And it's interesting because I've actually done that. I, for many of you guys who have um, sat with me for a while, you've known that I came from an engineering background, became a product man, product owner before much of Scrum was really like a thing. I'm maybe dating myself out there. And then also became a, went down that people manager track, uh, becoming a manager of product owners. And then I did pivot in my career to become more of the agile transformationalist, did the director of agile transformation kind of construct. And the, some of the things that came to mind when I went in that direction was one, you know, product management is, it's a, let's be honest, it can be very stressful, right? It's a full-time job. You, especially in the world of an agile uh, organization, if you work with uh, agile, you know, developers and things like that, it feels often like you can never potentially get ahead. You're always, I, I'm reminded a long time ago, we had a speaker come in and I forget who it was, but there was a visualization of the slide of a day in the life of a product owner or product manager. And it was like a nonstop thing. And so I took a moment out for myself and said, okay, what do I really enjoy? Where do I want to go in my career? And I took a moment and said, you know what? I'm going to try and look at organizational design try and work with other departments and see how that works. And I took a step out of my comfort zone because that is not typically where I thought my bread and butter was. It was more in the analytical thinking, more in the problem solving nature of things. And when I came away from that, from that experience was realizing that, you know, when you stretch yourself into different roles, into different um, functions, the world of product ownership and the world of product management, you can apply so many of those same kind of skills to a different space. You just have to choose to determine for yourself whether or not you enjoyed it, right? And so for me, I kind of, I did pivot back into product management because I do love that delivery of something and getting your hands dirty. Um, and so I, I honestly go back and forth quite a bit, but those were some of the things that I looked at when I did that pivot for myself. All right, back to you, Amulia. <laughs> That's awesome, Jen. I, I think I definitely relate to a lot of the points you brought up of feeling a bit burnt out at times as a product manager and considering some ways that I can apply some of my skills to maybe some, some other routes and, and options to think about there. So really interesting to hear that. Awesome. My next question is, what are your personal five-year career goals? And I'd like to ask Lori if she'd want to respond to that question. You would ask me this question. Um, fantastic question, by the way. But to be honest, I was just talking to Amy and one of our other friends, Kendra, about this uh, last week because I did some reflection, I think it's been two years ago now, of like, what did I want to do? And my goal was to become a director of product, um, and I've achieved that, which is great. But now I find myself in this spot of like, now what? Now what do I do? Um and I don't know the answer to that question yet. So um, this is something that I actually plan on thinking about later today after such an inspiring day from you all. Like I'm like fired up. Um, I think for me, um, it's really like growing into this director role and this leadership role and figuring out how to grow product managers from all different levels. That's been a really big challenge for me. Um, as I've moved into a managerial role. And then also, I would say, like, really taking the time to define if I enjoy this management career path instead of the IC career path. I think, Tiffany, you mentioned this earlier, is like, being in that IC role is comfortable. And being in a management role is new and different for me. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what are the things that I enjoy about it? And what are the things I don't 
enjoy about it so that I can either learn them or I can have a moment of reflection for myself and say like, maybe in the next five years, I do pivot back to something different or I do pivot into a new, a new role. I think the one thing I do know is that I would love to move back into FinTech. I love finance and accounting. Um, I also love education. So I'm definitely want to look at how do I blend those two things together and find like my best fit for a product or a company. So if you have any out there that you're like, I love this finance product, totally hit me up. I would love to hear more about it. But um, that's my non-answer for my five-year product <laughs> career goals. Thank you, Lori. I think we're all trying to evaluate our, our five-year plan, you know, on a pretty frequent basis and always changing, right? Awesome. I'll think we have time for maybe a, another question or two. My next question is, have you ever been frustrated as a result of not getting promoted or not achieving your next goal as quickly as you would have thought? And how would you navigate these kinds of, of situations? And I'd like to ask Shreemi if she could answer that question. Yeah, thank you, Amulya, for that question. Uh, so definitely, I have been in a, a situation where uh, fresh out of my college, I had to take this job uh, in a support product support role. And it was in a startup and it was completely, I was my first job uh, out of college. So it was completely new and stressful. And I, a few months into the job, I was like, what am I doing? Um, so I did try to get uh, into a different role, understand what, I, I was even not sure what all roles were out there. So that was a little frustrating uh, period when I tried to move, but I was not able to move. And then some of the things that really helped me in this process is um, to learn from seniors out there who are trying to do the same thing take an example of somebody who pivoted and learn from their experience. Hey, what worked for you? What didn't work for you? Um, it did take quite some time for me to get out of that role, partly because it was, uh, it, it was like a 10 hour job. But I think at the end of the day, the experiences for me uh, to learn to get out of it helped me later on where I got promoted quickly within a year in my second job. So. I think experience is a teacher and uh, there's no shortcut to that. Well said, Srimi. Awesome. I think that is it for our table topics today. Thank you all so much for these really great responses. A lot to reflect on for us. Thank you, Amelia. Those were wonderful questions. And yeah, we got such good, good responses. So thank you for that. Um, so, like, I know it's so tough to think on your feet, but I appreciate everyone being courageous and it is an important skill to practice. Uh, we will be showing a, a poll soon to have you vote for your, your favorite table topic speech, which will be tough. They were all really good. Uh, so now we'll move on to our third and final portion, which is the evaluation round. And Jennifer, you're doing double duty, but you are a general evaluator today, so I'll let you get started. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Monique. Okay, so here's how we're going to break down the evaluation section. We're going to go, I'm going to ask each of the uh, prepared speeches evaluators to start first, and then we'll circle back to timer, awe counter, grammarian, and then I'll wrap it up with the overall evaluation for the meeting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start out with Lori, if you could uh, do our evaluation here for our first speaker. Absolutely. So I'll give Amy a minute to pin Marguerite. I'm sure she's trying to find her. All right, Marguerite, our fearless timer and speaker. First off, two very hard roles to do in the same meeting. So thank you for doing that. Um, also, I loved your speech. So your speech was did require research, which is always hard to incorporate into a speech. So I thought you did a great job finding some really good resources and applied them to your story so you could blend the two. 
Um, your three main points and calling that out at the beginning of your speech really helped us get a feel for kind of how that was going to flow and also gave us a sneak peek into, yes, we get to hear about what Marguerite chose um, as we go through these points that she's gonna teach us about. So I was really excited about that. Um, also, you threw in a little bit of humor into your speech. So that is some a side of you that we don't get to see all the time in Toastmasters, but it really drew my attention right back into your speech. And I'm like, oh, oh, Marguerite, what else do you got under the hood over there? Um, and I also totally related to your joke of like, yeah, I do want to retire before I'm an assisted living center, but maybe that's not the case in today's world. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that. A couple of things that I think you can work on is continuing to add more vocal variety to kind of get your presentation to flow. So you did have vocal variety, but I do think there were points within your presentation where you could add just a little bit more that would make it even more impactful or draw us in just a little bit further. So you're definitely improving and I think that you can continue to do that. Um, additionally, it did look like you were reading your notes, just like I'm doing literally right now as I'm doing this evaluation. Uh, that is the hardest thing to do in our, our Zoom world is to stop that. But I think that knowing your presentation a little bit more would, especially around the research, would really bring us into knowing and trusting the research that you found online too. Um, and then the last thing I would challenge you to do is just more storytelling. So when you started talking about your career path and your decisions and your why, I was just sucked in and I could have listened to you talk about that for hours. Um, so I think that balancing the storytelling with the research and kind of, I would say almost like flipping the structure a little bit of like starting with your story and using the research to support your story that you're telling would just take it um, over the top. But I really appreciated that you did add your story into it because your why is something that I absolutely love. And now that is the part that I'm going to remember the most, as well as like being vulnerable with your realization that maybe people management wasn't the path for you. That could be a whole speech on its own that I would love to hear more about. So um, overall, it was a great speech. I enjoyed it. And I seriously want to learn more about how you made those choices and um, reflected on it yourself. So great job. Thank you, Lauren. Back to you, Madam, back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Yeah, thank you so much, Lori. I'm going to hand it back over to Amulia for our second speech evaluation with Ashley. So let's give our Sergeant in Arms, Amy, a little bit of a second to pin everybody. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Awesome. Ashley, I really just enjoy hearing you speak. I, I love all of your speeches. I think you're such an engaging speaker overall. You have really great cadence and tone and clarity and everything just flows so beautifully. And so always enjoy hearing you speak. This speech had this really great introduction and pull with your gaming metaphor. And I think everyone really enjoyed hearing you visualize and then come up with all of these really great details around games. And it was just very fun to hear all of that. You also just were a really great storyteller, I think, throughout this speech and were really able to grab and come up with these really nice dramatic moments where we were really just engaged in what you had to say next. And so I really just enjoyed hearing you go through that process. I think your steps for negotiation were also very clear and very aligned and made a lot of sense. You numbered them out really clearly for us. I think this could also make a really great blog post or article in the future too, if you ever wanna think about that. I'd love to just read through this speech and remind myself of all your tips at some point, because I think they're, they're really helpful and, and the way that you're able to just summarize all these uh, great lessons that you've learned throughout your career. And, and we're able to also add a lot of your own personal stories along with negotiation as well is, is really great to hear. Negotiation is something that is talked about so often and, and lots of folks have had different experiences with it. So it was great to hear your you know, objective recommendations as well as your own personal stories that come along with each of these recommendations that you provided with us. So really enjoyed the structure that you were able to provide there. In terms of tips, I'm not sure if I might have just missed this, but 
I, I don't remember if you covered negotiation during your introduction. And so I think it maybe took me a little bit of time to figure out that your speech is main topic was negotiation until you really got to those main tips. And so maybe if you weaved in negotiation into some of the gaming metaphors and some of your introduction a little bit earlier, I would have known where you were going there. So maybe something to think about there and would have also loved if you maybe drove back those gaming metaphors in your conclusion as well. Really liked how you summarized all of your tips, but maybe to make things a little bit fun, would have loved if you did a little bit of a call back to some of the gaming uh, metaphors that you were mentioning earlier would have been nice to hear as well, but great job, really engaging speech, really loved your tips and looking forward to hearing your next speech. Awesome. Thank you, Amelia. All right. So let's see. I am the third evaluator and I'll be evaluating Tiffany. So let's pin Tiffany in our timer here. All right, Tiffany, as always, I just really love hearing you speak about various topics. You have such a great and thoughtful way about structuring it. It's easy to follow. I know this particular speech, you were uh, very interested in your hand gestures and your body language. So I'm gonna focus, I focused in a little bit more on that. I wanted to first and foremost tell you, you had really good use of hand gestures. I appreciated, you know, centering yourself in the camera itself. I felt like there was a connection within the camera itself. I would challenge you though also, and I kind of could tell that it might be because I was looking for it more that you were maybe like reading and glancing at your notes a little bit more than, um, and it, like, like Lori had mentioned, it's so hard to do but not do in a Zoom type of setting. I One of the things when it comes to your hand gestures, I liked, um, that you were able to do like, you know, point number one, point number two, and it helped keep us on track with the outline of your speech itself. I also loved the fact that you did a callback to Ashley and it was very just sort of impromptu. It was obviously not something that you could script. It really just kind of helped tie the entire meeting together. And I really appreciated that. It's something that's an art and a talent that not a lot of people can do to be able to play in that moment and do a callback to another speaker in the moment, right? So those are the things that make a great speaker great. The other thing that I would say is I love your voice modulation. You really helped to engage the audience in that way. And then last but not least, I really appreciated the thoughtfulness that you put into your story arc, if you will. You know, you had started out bringing in like talking about she, this third person person, and then you tied it back into yourself. And it showed, it was a, an interesting way to like look at a presentation about your own personal journey and being vulnerable at the end there. Uh, and so I thought it was a very interesting way to present the topic itself. So overall, I wanna say great job. You always come through with an interesting and very thoughtful perspective on your own personal journey. And I really enjoyed this speech. So thank you for that, Tiffany. Thank you so much, Jen. I really debated hard about because it was <laughs> such a recent experience. I was very it's, careful about not being too like emotional about it. So thank you so it's much. It's a tough one. I mean, these that. career ladder conversations, I think each and every one of us, and you can tell this as we've been talking about it, it we struggle with it. We struggle with it because it's like we love product management. We struggle with it because there is an expectation around how our career should go and what it should look like. And not everybody has had the luxury or the opportunity to do people management. It's tough. These are the things that everybody will struggle with and has struggled with, I think. So I really appreciate your speech there. All right, so I'm gonna move us along here and I'm gonna start out with our timer. I'm gonna bring Marguerite back up to the stage and. I first and foremost want to say you were super courageous in trying to take on double duty around speaking and being the timer. So if you don't mind giving us our timer report, I would sure. really appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Madam General Evaluator. And I hope I was too scattered. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so for our prepared speeches, uh, for myself, I had uh, myself at six minutes and 41 seconds. 
uh, for Ashley. Kate, uh, so within the time, the, within the uh, five to seven minutes, Ashley was at six minutes and 16 seconds. And Tiffany uh, was at six minutes and 36 seconds. So all within time for our prepared speeches. Uh, <clears throat> next up for our table topic speakers, uh, uh, Fumi uh, was at 47 seconds. Uh, Cynthia, one minute and 34 seconds. So in time, uh, Luz was at one minute and 40 seconds. Also within time, Jennifer, two minutes, you're at two minutes and 15 seconds. So a little over. And Lori also a little over at two minutes and four seconds. And Shumai, you were also, uh, you were in time, one minute and 20 one second. Uh, so uh, that's our table topics uh, times. And for our evaluations, Lori, you were in time at two minutes and 46 seconds. Amelia also in time at two minutes and 43 seconds. And Jennifer again <laughs> in time at two minutes and 19 seconds. Thank you everyone for doubling up during that uh and doing a really we did a really good job with time today back to you Jennifer. all right awesome thank you so much for that readout marguerite and i'll turn it over to srimai sure yeah thanks jennifer Our counter okay yeah so um monique had three hours jennifer one uh marguerite uh, there were not many in the beginning of the speech, but just towards the end, you got a few, so about uh, seven to eight us. And Ashley had one arm and one, you know, uh, Tiffany had one arm. Laurie had five arms. Fumi, Cynthia, Luz, and Amulia didn't have any, so great job. And Jennifer... I counted one um, for you, but everyone did a great job today and nice work. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Lori. I know I caught a lot of courageous utilization here. So I'm really curious, Lori, what did you catch in terms of our grammarian word of the day use? Yeah, I actually think almost everyone that spoke used it and some of us used it multiple times. So I picked, maybe an easy word to use, but also like hard to keep track of because everyone was using it. So um, I did write down Jen, Monique, Marguerite, Tiffany, Ashley, I think Luz used it. Um, Amelia definitely used it too. So I actually think all of us used it. Um, for quotes though, I also wrote down some cool quotes today. So the ones that I wrote down was um, the art of rest. This is something that stands out to me because I should do better at that. Um, also, I love the video game references today. Ashley, your analogy around video games like really brought together that career journey and, and helping us all relate to it in an easy way, something we're all familiar with. Um, I believe it was Tiffany. I can't, I should have wrote down who said it, but somebody did say progress over perfection. Um, that was a really key one that stood out to me as well. And then um, also we have, am I growing or stagnating? Um, I thought that was a really good use of language as well. And that's what I got. All right. Thank you so much, Lori. All right. So I guess it's my turn as a general evaluator to give you feedback, to give this entire club feedback on how this meeting went today. First and foremost, I want to thank Monique as being a great tabletop or great Toastmaster, sorry. Um, you stepped in, You, I saw that you had gone ahead and tried to verify that everybody was going to be attending today. That's a great hallmark of a Toastmaster, just getting all of our folks queued up. You also had a um, little welcome introduction for each of our prepared speeches. And so you were great in organizing that. Also, I want to say thank you to our um, Sergeant in Arms. You did a great job in spotlighting folks, and you are the Zoom master. So thank you so much, Amy. You did a great job doing that, too. I also wanted to say I really appreciate the folks in this meeting. You know, when we have folks that are unable to make it for whatever reason, people are 
not afraid to step in and help out where they can and help fill the roles because we are each and every one of us giving back to each other. And part of doing that is being able to help coach on timing, being able to help coach on table topics, things of that nature. And so it is truly a team effort to be able to help every one of us be able to improve in our speaking. And that's evidence every time that people do a double duty type of role. So I really appreciate people who step up and uh, are willing and able to help each other out in that way. The other thing that I also wanted to say um, that went really well in this meeting is that Amulia, you had really great uh, questions. I think that we all really learned from each other in terms of the questions that you raised and the thoughtful answers that each and every one of us put forward in that. Um, and then also, let's see, uh, one piece of feedback that I thought might be helpful in future meetings is just be ready in terms of like posting out the agenda in the chat early on, early. I don't know if that's just like always going to be Tiffany as a secretary. I know Tiffany always puts together the agendas. So we should probably as a team or as an organization, or maybe even it's just something that think about as Toastmaster, who's going to actually do that? right? Like just so it's just always like runs like a, a smooth machine. Um, the other thing that I would say is to things to think about is we may want to always just validate at the very beginning. How are we going to do the table topics um, voting? I wasn't quite sure how we we're actually going to do that this time around. I was, and I actually did not see the poll come out. So I'm not sure if it was just me uh, paying attention to something else. But um, I think that's one piece of feedback that we got to determine, like, how do we want to structure that going forward? If we want to delegate that to the whoever's running table topics, or if it's something that the Toastmaster would help just make sure we're on the same page. Um, overall, I thought it was a really, really great meeting. Monique, you are always such a great uh, master of ceremony. You have such an easy way of maybe of facilitating these kind of meetings. And I always appreciate it when you come to the table as our Toastmaster. So that's my evaluation for today. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Monique, so you can help wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jennifer. That was yeah. such a, a thoughtful, um, very, very, very great um, overview. And I, I want to echo what you said as well. Like, thank you to everyone. Like, I know when it's a holiday weekend that we're not going to have as many members as we normally would have. So I, I was just so incredibly impressed by how um, everyone um, d did double duty, great topics, great speeches, um, and evaluations. So thank you. It's a, a testament of to our guests. It's a testament of the skills that you develop in this Toastmasters Club that just really impressed with everyone. Uh, so I know the the poll just popped up. I will give a minute for everyone to to um, put their vote in. So I guess I will pass it on to Marguerite uh, to talk about any um, education related updates and then we'll go back to Amelia with our winner. Thank you, Monique. Uh, and uh, as always, an awesome Toastmaster. Thanks for stepping up to the role this week. And uh, I just wanted to, um, before I talk about meeting roles, like I always do, uh, check with uh, Fumi if you had, first, thank you Fumi for stepping up and participating in Table Tops. That was awesome. Uh, you gave a great response, or, uh, I assume it's your first time. Did you have any feedback or questions for us? Thanks uh, for that. Uh, yes, I do have a question, because obviously it's <clears throat> my first time. If I wanted to become a member, what do I need to do? And how often do you meet? And what day of the week do you meet? Uh, if you want to join, uh, you can just send us an email. Um, we can, we'll put the email in the Zoom chat uh, shortly. Um, and just just uh, just uh, email, just send an email to that address with saying you're interested in joining and we'll give you more details about that process. Um, okay. 
and sorry, what was your your second question? Oh, we meet um, every other week, so every other Sunday. Okay. Bye, Salam. Bye. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, and my last. Uh, thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany just put the email address in the chat. And uh, just a reminder to everyone, please, uh, I'll just put the link in the chat to our meeting roll sheet. Feel free to write in the role you want for the next meeting. Uh, we also have one uh, speaker slot available if anyone is interested. Um, <clears throat> and we can also start filling out, uh, you know, you can start filling out looking ahead to the rest of the year. We're, get, we're getting close <laughs> to the end of 2022. So thank you guys for taking a look at that and taking a moment to put your name in for different roles. And Amelia, are you or are you ready for <laughs> yes, definitely. Awesome. Our table topics speech winner for today is Cynthia. So congratulations, Cynthia. Great response today during table topics. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I guess we will pass it to Amy to close us out today. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, and thanks for a great meeting. I I loved learning about uh, everyone's take on product. Uh, career ladder and it's a really good great meeting so I will stop the recording now and we will be adjourned <laughs>